Mic check one two, testing one two. Mic check one two, testing one two. Mic check one. Mic check one, two, test. Mic check one, two, test. Mic check one, two, test. Mic check, one, two, test, test. Mic check one two, testing one two, mic check one two, testing one two.
Mic check one, two, testing one, two. Mic check.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Before we, uh, we start with the testimonies, I want to recognize uh, a couple of my colleagues here. On my left, Senator Moylan, Jim Moylan. Senator Amanda Shouten. And my favorite speaker, Tina Muna Barnes. And my other favorite niece, Teresa Lai. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say this. I, I decided to have something like this, an open forum for everybody so we can gather some of the input that we need to do. And believe it or not, we're going to send, we're going to send what happened here today to our congressman and even to, to, to the Congress of the United States, uh, asking them to, uh, to uh, disregard the ban that, that the president have signed. Uh, The Committee on Public Safety, Border Security, Military and Veterans Affairs, Mayor's Council of Guam, Infrastructure and Public Transit is now in session. The time now is 3.23. And public hearing notice for this hearing were disseminated on March 22nd and March 27th in accordance with the open government law. I'd like to thank all of you for your attendance at today's public hearing on resolution 1435 relative to requesting Guam delegate to Congress Michael San Nicolas to introduce an amendment to the Organic Act of Guam regarding protecting cultural significance practices. When I first communicated with our congressman, this is the first thing that I did. I asked him to seek the change, uh, have Congress change the Organic Act so that to ask Congress not to interfere with the culture, the tradition that we have here on Guam in as far as cockfighting. I also like to thank my co-sponsors and colleagues for attending today's hearing. And let me introduce them uh, later on for, for your testimony. And it will be recorded, so you'll be popular. Your voice will be traveling thousands of miles from here and will be heard in Congress. The purpose of this hearing is to gather the public's input on the federal government's decision to ban, to ban cockfighting without first seeking the advice and consent of our island's residents, whom will feel the blunt of its decision as many as you make your living, support your family, and have done so many, in many cases, for the generations. Cockfighting, ladies and gentlemen, has been a part of Guam history, even noted in journals of Spanish sailors as far as back in 1521. And I mentioned 1521. If you remember, um, Guam was discovered by, who was the one that discovered sea? Uh, Magellan. Was that Magellan? Yes. Magellan discovered Guam back in 1521. But even before then, before 1521, we had cockfighting here in Guam. And remember, before 1521, there were two galleons that sunk out in, uh, in the Pacific Ocean. And, and most of those occupants of that uh, ship, the galleons, came to our island and married our sisters in Guam. So naturally, you know, for so many years, it's been centuries and centuries that went by. There's no pure tomorrow in Guam. It's, uh, it's a combination of Filipinos, Spanish, uh, Chamorro, and even uh, Mexican. So this is where we're coming from, and uh, we want to continue pushing for this. And I hope that we can be successful in changing the, uh, making that amendment. Our, our senator can be successful in, uh, in this attempt to change uh, the ban uh, law that our president signed. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, Senator uh, uh, Peter Chalai, for giving me the opportunity to also recognize some of the members uh, that are here. Uh, we want to again thank all of you for taking the time to listen and hear what uh, our people have to say regarding this ban on cockfighting. I'd like to recognize the uh, director from the, I mean, the a uh, representative from the governor's office, uh, Mr. Melvin Tabilius, uh, policy director. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Melvin, for being here on behalf of the governor's office. 
Thank you. Also, uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the uh, from Congressman uh, Michael St. Nicholas' office, we have our district director from Guam, Ms. Ms. Jennifer Wynn. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being here uh, this afternoon. And uh, we now open the floor for discussions, and we uh, ask that Mr. Jesus P. St. Nicholas and Mr. Sidfrey Lansangen, you're more than welcome to come up to the podium uh, to uh, share uh, your oral testimony in support or against this resolution. Is it my is it my turn now? Yeah, yes, sir. Miss, Mr. Saint Nicholas, if you're here. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Sedfri M. Linsangan, and uh, I'm a proud member of the Game Foul fraternity that includes distinguished person in the past: George Washington, Thomas Jefferson. Benjamin Franklin, Andrew Jackson, Abraham Lincoln, Julius Caesar, and other uh, generals and commanders during that time. First and foremost, I would like to thank the senators for giving their special and precious time to us, and especially doing something to uh, lift the ban that was done by Congress. Yes, while I support the intention of this bill, I don't support the method or the way that it is being uh, processed or being uh, uh, proposed. Let me start. 3,000 years ago or more, cockfighting was already a custom. During the height of Greece or Greek uh, peak or Greece peak, uh, there is a general by the name of Thermopolis that before they face the uh, invading Persians, they staged a cockfight the night before to inspire his warriors before facing the opponents. And same thing with Julius Caesar and other kings during that time. It was promoted by the Spanish and by the king of England. And the England people promoted it to the Americans because the Americans came from the England country. Most of them during that time are from uh, England. That's why there is a rich history about this uh, cockfighting. They call it a gentleman sport, G uh, game pal fighting. <coughs> there was also a time that during the presidency of Andrew Jackson, the cockfight was being held in the palace or outside the lawn in the palace or in the committee room. Even the, one of the great president, Abraham Lincoln, was very active in the cockpit. He was also a referee. He became a referee to, to support his living because our one of the great presidents by that time was poor. And to support his living, he worked as a referee. And during that time, he was called as, his nickname is Anes Abe because he's too honest in officiating the cockpit. He's not honest. <laughs> He was called Anes Abe, not because of returning the books that he borrowed, but because of his, uh, of his honesty in officiating the cockpit. And he's very good because of his height, six footer plus, and a long arms, he can you know, pick up the rooster at ease. That's why uh, this uh, cockfighting is very rich in uh, history. And 4,000 years ago, 3,500 years ago, there's no based on the book or the history that I read, there's no tomorrow yet in this island. The immigrants came here. And who are the immigrants? The Indonesian, the Taiwanese, and the Filipinos. That was 3,500 years ago. 
And then in 3,000 years, it, it evolved the tomorrow bit, in between those three, three races. And the tomorrow culture evolved. Then we were, we were uh, invaded or colonized by the Spanish and they introduced it to us also together with the Philippines because Philippines, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Marianas were bought by the uh, Americans to the Spanish for $24 million. But the good thing about Guam is very lucky. The U.S. government or the U.S. Congress have granted the Organic Act of Guam, the federal law, and this is what the Filipinos Envy, envy most. Why? Because before they start the revolution against the Spanish, they sent a delegation to Spain. They spoke with the king of Spain and demanded or plead to the king of Spain, King, make us province of Spain. Grant us the same right that the Spanish have and we will not revolt. We will be your province. Make us a Spanish citizen. But the king of Spain did not grant that. So what happened? The Filipinos start the revolution. And then where they are about to, to defeat the Spanish, the Americans help them. And then the Americans colonized them. And after that, they thought the Americans will make them independent. What happened? The Philippines staged a war again against the American, and the Filipinos lost, but the Americans told them, okay, we'll discuss it in Congress, and the Congress make, made the decision. The Filipinos lost by, one, lost by one boat, just one boat only. They're supposed to become independent. Then they make a legislation again, and the U.S. Congress decided, you're not yet ready to become independent. We'll give you 10 years. We'll, give, we'll devise the organic act of the Philippines. After 10 years, you will become independent. So the Philippines did not continue anymore the revolution. The organic act of the Philippines was ratified unanimously by the people. Then after 10 years, the Americans granted their independence. That's why, my dear people of Guam, maybe we can learn something from the history of the Philippines, how it became independent. Now, why they're trying to uh, ask for the, or for the same right that the U.S. Congress had, have granted the people of Guam, the Organic Act of Guam? Because the Organic Act of Guam protect you, give you all the rights to become American citizen the same right that they have but we just have to assert it we just have to protect that right and enforce it because u.s congress is not perfect if they can see something that they will be in their favor they will do it to us but if we are silent and will not do anything then that will be it that's why in my opinion, in my humble opinion, Mr. Chairman, we have all the rights already. It is specified in the Bill of Rights. Just like 23 Bill of Rights that is specified in the federal law, in the Organic Act of Guam. Now, we have the right to petition the government for the redress of, of our grievances. Whatever we complain, whatever we don't want, if they take their land, they took, they took our land, your land, you have the right to complain. If you don't like what they're doing, you have the right to complain. You have the right to petition. Not only petition, but you can sue them in court. You can make a lawsuit because that's what they welcome. They welcome that lawsuit or any complaint that you have in your mind. The most important Bill of Rights here is the last Bill of Rights that they adopted for us. It is the subsection U. 
it state like this. The following provision of and the amendments of the United States are hereby extended to the people of Guam to the extent that they have not been previously extended to the territory. Now they are in full force and effect as in the United States or other U.S. states in America. It means our rights are absolute, complete, total, the same right as in the American citizen in the states. And there is a clause there that the laws of Congress that they enacted and the laws of the territory of Guam that, 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 they, that is enacted in case that it is not uh, it's not inconsistent with the provision of this chapter is, is hereby repealed. That's a strong case already. Meaning they cannot make a ban on our way of life. You know, on our culture. You know, on our liberty. Because one of the bill of rights is no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Now, what is the due process of law? The pro There's two uh, process of law. The procedural process, meaning they need to consult first with the people. If there is a way of life or culture or custom that they will be banning before they enforce that. Second, what is the sub is the substantive due process. Substantive due process is a right, inalienable right that cannot be taken away from you by the government. Just like our culture, our costume, our way of life. That's why we are well protected and the U.S. government have no business interfering with the way of life of the people of Guam. That's why Mr. Chairman, in my opinion, we need to enforce this organic act because by not doing so, we are weakening or undermining the right that's already granted to us. You know, by, by proposing another amendment to the organic act is not needed, you know, because we already have that rights, absolute right. We just have to inform them assert it. Just like if we have a problem with our congressmen not being able to vote on the floor, only on the committee, then we need to introduce a bill to the Congress. Or we need to file a lawsuit against the U.S. government because they have trampled on our right. You know, they step on our right. And they're the one that made it, give it to us. And they cannot just take it out from us because we are complaining. And then we have we also need to follow up with that, with that uh, idea that we can also vote for the president because they did it, they did it with Washington, D.C. They made an electorate on the Washington, D.C. so that they can vote because we are also U.S. citizens. And then if we go to the mainland, we can vote. What's that kind of rule or law? You know, that's inequality. You know? And then other thing, we also pay, we also pay or pay IRS taxes. You know, I call it taxation without representation. This is the reason why our founding fathers like George Washington, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson revolted against the British Empire. And those people are from, Thomas Jefferson are from England because they're imposing too much tax, but they don't have any representation. Okay. You know? The same thing with us, we're paying taxes. What is one senator of Guam to be included in the U.S. Senate? There's nothing for the U.S. government. And it needs to be funded by the U.S. government because we are paying IRS tax. And that's why my brothers here in the Guam Game Pal Fraternity, it is important to exercise our right to vote. You know, sometimes we're just very good. 
in saying that we bought but we did not. This is our right, our sacred right. It's of us, just one vote. And we need that so that in the future, we can show it to the U.S. Congress that Guam is strong, Guam is united. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I, I just want to add, uh, because I think the cockfight, uh, cockfighting is going to start at 5 o'clock, and we've got so many people that are going to testify, so maybe we can just limit our, some of our testimony. We do appreciate the total testimony that you will present, but because of uh, the time that we have, uh, maybe we can just limit our uh, testimony for, maybe it's allowable, a little bit over five, uh, five minutes, but... Uh, in order for everybody to, to come out and testify, uh, we need to cut short some of our testimony. Thank you very much. Next, next up, Mr. Um, Frank Titano, uh, Mr. Julio Onse. Would you like to speak or you're just here to support? Support. Thank you. Okay. I just. Um, okay. This. I just want to add that if you have, uh, I know that you wrote your name uh, to testify, but we can accept your written testimony ten days after today, and you can send it to my address, my office in Aganya. Babasti sat matesta. Ten days. Uh, your your written testimony can be delivered uh, to my office at email uh, Senator Pedro at Senator P J P Terlai dot com. We can accept that after ten days after today. So if you want to write your written testimony and not testify verbally here, uh, it's fine with us. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Go ahead, sir. For the record, it's Tayanya. Tayanya? Yes, Tayanya. Uh, we'll just, yes, right. That's we'll just keep it uh, short and simple. Uh, we're here today. Uh, I work for the Department of Corrections, Mr. Pito. Uh, I'm just here to uh, support our, our, our recreational, cultural, uh, our event that we have during uh, fiestas and all the other uh, events we have around here. And uh, pretty much for the people of Guam, uh, it, you know, it's an outsource. We, we don't have much outsource here in Guam. We don't have nothing to do. Uh, they're trying to stop the cockfighting, uh, all these other things. Soon they're going to start attacking the, bing the bingo where the old ladies go and play bingo. Next thing you know, it's all going to be shut down. Uh, we, we're having all this debate with uh, recreational marijuana, gambling, you know, just all this stuff. But, hey, a little bit of everything. What, what are we going to do in Guam? Where are we going to go and give our energy during the weekend? What are we going to do, go to church every seven days a week? Or, you know, we, we got to have some kind of outsource. So if you start taking everything away from the people of Guam, crimes are going to rise because we don't have no uh, weekend activities to go to. And uh, this band that was opposed on us, it, it was out of the blues. It just came out overnight, and now they want to take everything away from us. Uh, Mr. Congressman, uh, I know that his, his dad cockfights. I've cockfighted with him a long time, even though I'm way younger than him. I've been doing this since I was 10 years old. Amen. I learned it from my grandpa, my, my dad. Uh, they weren't at the level that we're at now because we travel to the Philippines on a yearly basis to participate on this sport. And it's huge. It's a Puerto Rico, it's an $80 billion industry. Philippines, I, I won't even say how many millions of billions of dollars, but it's huge in the Philippines. And it brings money. It brings people together. Nobody's died at a cockfight. I, I don't see why it's so, the Humane Society, it, it, man, there's people dying out there for no food, no water. They're asking for $2 to, to help the people in, this, in the poor country to, to feed them, but then yet the Humane Society is asking $10 to feed a dog for the next week. We gotta justify whose lives are more important, the animal's lives or the people's life. Yeah. And, Somewhere in the Bible it says that we cannot justify that an animal's life is equivalent to a human's life because God created us as a, as a superior being over animals. Yes. That's why we're not animals. And the bottom line is, if they're going to ban 
and just, all right, take it away. We go back to the recreational marijuana. Why can't we have recreational cockfighting? If we're going to have recreational marijuana use, let's have, it, it's a federal ban. But it's legal in California, Washington, somewhere. I don't, I don't smoke marijuana, so I don't really, I cockfight, that's my high. Amen. That's what I do. I come here and I cockfight weekends, and that's it. I go to work, and I feed my family, and I'm not struggling to pay my bills. I'm not a gambler. I'm not an addict. I just enjoy cockfighting, and I've been doing it since I was 10 years old. We do it out in the front yard. We do it as kids. We, we bent the nail to try to make knife when we don't know how when we're young, but now we're, it, we're more at a professional level of it, and why, why take it away from us when we can better it and possibly generate more money? have a nicer facility, like the Philippines, it's aircon. We, we do it at, uh, in the Philippines, if you got, it's, uh, Speaker Talai, I know you've been there. The, <laughs> the World Resort, Resort World Casino. It's in the theaters of the casino. It's aircon, it's no smoking, and there's a big ring in the theater, and, and people just go there and sit down and do what they do, and you know, to just outright come here and just yank it out without the people of Guam. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about the people, not Filipinos, Chamorro, just everybody. You're just going to outright take that out and just say, that, I don't know what you guys are going to do for the rest of your life. That's just plain all wrong. Uh, I think that's why we vote for you guys, so you guys can fight for us because you're at that seat to communicate and level with higher people. We're, we're, just, the, we're just the people, and we voted you guys in there to help us. And now this is our governor. Our, our Congress people, our congressmen, that, that's, what, that's what you guys are there for. You guys are the ones with the brains. We're just, we're just regular people trying to live a day-to-day -day life and make ends meet and you wanna kill our sport? Or, you know, there's horse racing going over there. The horse dies right after the race. They're still doing it. There's dog races. Anything, if you tie up a dog, it's, it's cruel and unusual because the dogs are, the horses are made to run free, right? You, you cage it, you train it, you condition it. We do the same thing for our chickens. And I'll tell you what, our chickens cost a lot of money. Uh, any, to get a chicken in from the States is anywhere between four to $500 a rooster. So one rooster, that rooster comes to Guam, you get 12. You feed it on a daily basis, you, you give it all kinds of vitamins, you clean the cups, you clean the water, everything is nice and clean. I don't know if the chickens are suffering, but you know, when the time comes, just like an MMA fighter, when the time comes, you gotta get in the ring and give it all you got. I mean, people are beating each other to death in those rings. Boxing, MMA, uh, where do we justify that a chicken's life is worth taking it all away from what we do? So, Congressman, Senator, I'm just at, we're, we're just, the cockfighting community of Guam is just asking for help. I can guarantee you, Somebody in your family cockfights. You can't tell me that. I know the Munez cockfight. I know the Terlai's cockfight. I know some of the Moylans do. Shimazus, uh, what's the other senator? I, we can go on and on. Everybody has a family member in Guam that does it. Is that something you want to do to your dad? Your dad cockfights, mm. but you... Okay, dad, I, I'm sorry, but we're going with uh, the federal law. You have to kill all your chickens and get rid of it and, and stop doing it because it's illegal now. Pretty much it's gonna force us to, for me as a correction officer, between my job and cockfighting, of course I'm gonna have to stop because I cannot lose my job because I get paid every two weeks guaranteed. Guaranteed payday. Cockfight is not guaranteed. That's, that's what I'm talking about. It's not guaranteed, but we still do it because it's our hobby, it's our life, it's our way of living. If it was about gambling and getting rich, I guarantee you, everybody here that cockfights, none of you guys got rich off it. Mm -hmm. And sure as hell, I don't. I didn't. I, I, I win quite a few times, but I'm not rich. I don't get rich off it. I've been to the Philippines. I didn't get rich off it. But I enjoy it. It's just like everybody else. You do what you enjoy. So we're just asking for help. That's all. Go ahead, Perry. Well, when it's, uh, thank you, my name is Vince Elgin. Um, on behalf of the Guam Cockers here on island, we thank you for acting in a timely manner and drafting the resolution to the congressman. Um, we see that you are doing your work, and I just want to state no cocker here is against the federal government or Congress or the Senate. 
What we are against is section one two uh, forgive me one two six one six of the Agricultural Improvement Act of twenty eighteen regarding the territories. Uh, you know, I I spoke with the congressman and uh, I went to his omnibus and it's pretty it's not on the congressman's side, but it's kind of depressing uh, for Congress to act in a timely manner. The reason why is proof of that is if we're going to wait on Congress to uh, act on our behalf to either repeal, strike, or remove it, the section 12616, it's going to take time. We're in desperate action. And those Congress and those Senate were, how shall I say, highly influenced by private organizations, not law enforcement agencies. And those private organizations are invading private property and doing things illegal. Just because someone says they're doing illegal, is it right for them to do something legal to enter private property? Why aren't the federals arresting that? That only applies to federals. Now, this here is uh, desperate times. As we see from the professor, Dr. Vila, from EOG, it is cultural. And it's also going to have an impact on our economy on Guam. As um, my friend colleague here, Frank, says he works for uh, DOC. That's a highly intense job, as we all know, especially what goes on in prisons. But if he and his family is raising fowls, and those that fathers and mothers out there supporting their kids raising fowls, that's therapeutic for us. It takes us the stress and anxieties, the demands, especially being Guam being too expensive to live on. But like I said, it's culturally, and, and the federals will be violating a local law. Because according to Title 10, GCA Health and Safety, Chapter 34, Keeping Animals, Article 2, Humane Treatment of Animals, Section 34205, Animal Care, Subsection B, no person shall beat, cruel, cruelly ill treat, torment, overload, overwork, and otherwise abuse an animal or cause, instigate, or permit any dogfight or bullfight or other combat between animals with the exception of cockfighting as regulated by the cockpit license board. Now that, if the federals enter that, the property, then they are violating a Guam law and they are denying us rights to practice and continue on our cultural beliefs. A cultural a culture will not die unless the people allow it to die. Now, these outside interference does not help our cause. Outside interference is talking about Jesus, the Humane Society of the United States, and PETA, not Congress, because they have the big money and the lobbyists. But it's going daily that those folks are fake. It's going, really, they don't have the shelters. What it is, they just kill the animals on there, on site, because they don't have the shelters right then and there. But you go to our, our farms, I tell you, I'm very iffy when I raise my game fowls. I get, I, I don't know, what is it, ODC when I see rocks, feathers, and tree leaves there? No, my birds should not be living like that. My cups of water should be clean and not dirty. You know, I'm a single, at one time I was a single active custodial parent of three boys by raising cockfights, supporting them, not stealing, killing, or dealing. My eldest son is the president of the Chamorro Club at Simon Sanchez High School, and he's also the president of the LGBTQ at, at Simon Sanchez. And my two youngest sons represent Guam and the national team. There's nothing illegal going on right there. And they're doing it right, especially a single custodial parent. Now, these people are going to come and try and tell us how to live? Who are they? What are they doing for Guam? Because what I'm doing is I'm investing on Guam, just like these other cockers. Now, that resolution, you guys acted in a time, especially transitioning into this. Thank you so much for doing it for the people here and being present. But I'm going to ask humbly if you senators, could draft a resolution to the governor of Guam to make an executive order as it states in Title 22, GCA Business Regulation, Chapter 39, Cockfighting, Section 39103, License Board Rules and Regulations. The governor may issue an executive order and board, and the board may recommend to the governor for an issuance of executive orders such as reasonable rules and regulations and not inconsistent with the laws of Guam it may be necessary or desirable to enable the board to carry into effect the provisions of this chapter. But instead, since we lack a board, that's why I'm humbly asking you senators to draft the resolution to the Magahaga. And I would like to help on the, the wording that in the law, it shall be illegal for any federal agent to arrest 
and owner of any game files and to enter their property and to seize the game files, arresting the owner and seizing materials of the files whatsoever. It, and what you call it, not only seizing, but euthanizing the animals. You mean they're going to transport, because it's a federal law, they're going to transport us all the way to California, to Lompoc, just for raising birds? The crime doesn't fit, and the only one that's going to suffer is the taxpayers. We're here, and nicely humbly, if you could do that, draft a resolution to the executive director. And I thank you for your time and all that you've done for us. You are working for us, and thank you for allowing the chance to be heard once again. Thank you, Next, we have Deborah A. Pereira, Sunny Jomar, Sunny Jomar, just in support. We have um, jo Jolita or Jolito Tarla, just in support. Vicente Velasquez, in support. Or would you like to do oral testimony? Sean Charfus, Sean Charfus, Anthony Maforti, support, P.L. Ta, Ed, support, Ed, Ed Fernandez, Ed, for, support, Al St. Augustine, please. Yeah, my name is uh, Vicente Sinicles Velasquez. Uh, I'd like to thank you, everybody, the senators, and everybody's here. Now, right now, uh, I want to say I agree with what all the others have been saying of the cop fighting. I'm also letting you guys know that I'm supporting the cop fighting. The main thing right now, I'm trying to ask the senators, how long this, this thing's going to take, or how long are we going to find out if they're going to leave the ban, or when they're going to leave the ban? Because the way I look at it, we had a meeting starting at UOG. Everything was just quiet after that. I've been hearing TVs about there's more priorities about cop fighting. Like I'm saying right now is uh, I'm trying to see where we're going to stand on this. How long is it going to take for us to know? I'm also a breeder. I'm a cop fighter. I breed for my own fighting. And the more I spend, and then December 17 comes, Bad news, you know, it's a lot of hurting on our, on our pocket. And uh, that's the only thing I'm trying to concern is how long it's going to take for us to know. Do you want, do you want an answer to that, sir? Some, some kind of... Uh, well, we're working on it. We're, uh, after this, we're going to read you the resolution that I submitted to our congressman back in January. But whatever information uh, we got from the congressman or even from Congress, we'll send it out right away. We'll let the public know. I'd like to hear that. We'll, yeah. we'll be in line with your thoughts, and uh, we're going to push for this. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Alison Augustine. My name is Alison Augustine, speaker and honorable senators. I know that a lot of your senators are brand new at this, and I call it brand new because you're new faces. I've been in this politics for a long time. I know the laws and I know the federal laws. Under the Organic Act, you work for the federal. You are controlled by the United States, and that's the truth. You try your best, but you can't be prejudiced by law because as you raise your hand, you swear not to go against the federal government, and that includes the government. But there are other ways to pursue this. During the military buildup, nine months before the military buildup, they came to us, and I am a council member of the Tamora tribe. 
listed as an American Pacific Indians. Under those federal laws, that's what Congress recognized who we are. To accept it, I do accept it. For our lawmakers to accept that, they have to make their decision on which one. Can the Organic Act can be continued to go to Congress and present cases and told we can't pursue? Why? Because you can't be prejudiced by law on that part. Our Congress lady for decades knew that, and that's why we haven't been receiving what we need. During the military buildup, they say, this is what you need to do. Now, we're not fully acknowledged, but we're only recognized, but through those laws, made it possible for billions of dollars to come out our way because it was presented by the true owners of the island, the indigenous people. A rabbi told me one time, I do not understand that your ancient Chamorro language, we say the same way on the numbers. How is it that we say your numbers and our numbers is the same way? That they don't understand. In 1995, I did a video of the war Pacific Island, Spanish War. People came from all over the world trying to figure out just who we are and where our language came from. The decision that they made was mostly they assumed. They don't even know where our language came from, but this is, the, this is one thing they do know. Our DNA is not Asian. We have our own DNA, and they can't explain exactly where that DNA came from. We are not Koreans. We're not Filipinos, we're not Chinese or Americans. We are a very indigenous people. So therefore, the federal government recognizes us as a tribe. Because of the Organic Act, you are the federal agents of the United States. You need to understand that, and I know you do understand those things. To pursue issues on the farm bill. When I say farm bill, I'm talking about also cockfighting. Okay. And I'm going to be very direct about this. Accept it or not. Do you want to spin your wheels or not? Which way you want to go? You go against this law of cockfighting and you will lose the farm bill. You go against, you go with the laws that they wrote that pertains to this island, which most senators do not understand yet those federal laws. You would gain more on that farm bill instead of losing. And also cockfighting will be left alone. And that's the truth. Because I do know, as I dealt with the federal government, we may not like what you say, but you tell us, and we have to follow it, because we wrote it. So which direction you lawmakers going to go? And I appreciate you lawmakers, yes, deeply, your deep concern of being there, trying to support us on this, to keep cockfighting going. I truly, truly understand that. But there's like, this, like, like our new elected Mike St. Nicholas said, there is a loophole. Well, this is the loophole. And he knows that very well. We're having a meeting with the congressman sometimes next month, which is probably next week. And we're going to sit down. And I'd like to invite every one of you senators to be with us on that when that day comes. So we can discuss this matter and how to beat this. And I do fully understand that it can happen. 
Now, during the military buildup, what I call the problematic agreement, okay? I call that problematic because it was a problem. There were two senators in there, okay? And the people from Washington stood up and asked the two senators to please excuse themselves because they were not allowed in there because they can't be prejudiced by law. So are we willing to go around in circles knowing that you know what I know? The truth has to come out. We gotta stop hurting our community by accepting that going around in circles. And most of you senators know what I'm talking about. As you create your laws, do we follow it? Yes, we do. Can we afford it? Sometimes we can't. But through these laws, if we do, there'll be millions and millions and billions of grants that can come into this island and giving us, as we cannot vote for president, is because we can't be prejudiced by law. Our U.S. citizen is only 50%. That gives us no rights. But under the federal laws, if we accept that title, we have all those rights. Nothing will change, we'll just have better things to come. But we need to accept that and be federally acknowledged in order to get that. It's a big piece of pie that travels a long ways. And believe me, it's not just tomorrow to take care of it, it's a long process. But taking that road, this today wouldn't be happening. And the federal government is willing to pursue that because most of our senators and most of our governors, when they went to Washington, they come back and they speak to me. Mr. Sinagasin, they're so prejudiced. And I says, do you understand the word prejudice? I says, it's not prejudice by skin or race. Prejudice by knowledge. I know what you want, but I'm not going to tell you. You have to earn it and follow those federal laws to get to the tip of that spear. Which way you want to do it? It's up to you. And many have tried that, but they did not have that laws to follow through. And I urge you, senators, please, walk with us on this to save this island. And it's the only way. Times are hard, and we're still the luckiest people in the world. Why? I've been told by Congress, this island is the luckiest people. The only thing is they need to know how to do it. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Next on the list to speak, we have uh, Roderick Corodera. Roderick Corodera, here to support. Wilfred de Jesus. Yes, that's it, man. Ed, Eduardo Menaces. Buenas, buenas, Manilu and Manau. Quao si Wilfredo Antonio de Jesus. Mafanogu Totoagania. No, anyway, just to say this very simple. If you see something, you say something, right? So I'm going to say something. If we don't have the right to vote for the President of the United States, and I have no freedom to vote for anything that happens with the federal laws, and to go there and just to sit there and look in the eye and say, what is going on? How come they told me to leave the room? Because I am a Chamorro or I am an American. So think about that. I see myself Forget, forget about myself, okay? Oh my goodness, why are you interrupting me? Anyway, that's the wife. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm here. I, I've been going to cockfight. The only thing I like to see is because, you know, there, there are things in life that you can't take away from anybody, and that's the culture. Everything here that is what I hear everybody saying, culture is a big thing. I have, and you know, like Mr. Frank Tyner saying, 
it's a sport, man, you know? I wake up in the morning, my wife said, you're going to the car fight again? Yeah, I want, I, I, I want to fight my rooster, but let's get this thing going. Let's let the people of Guam feel that the resolution is going to go through. Fight for us, please, and that's all I'm asking. Get this thing rolling, and I think we should have some good things rolling with Senator Terlai. And once the resolution bill has been sent to Congress, uh, Michael St. Nicholas and to him, he needs to support us 100%. There is no if, ands, buts about this. We are here to testify and support of the cockfighting. You know, I, I just don't understand people, as you know, how can they do this to us? We, we're not even involved in voting for the farm bill. Nobody is. I don't know if uh, the old late, uh, not late, but the old uh, uh, Congressman Madeline have foreseen things in Washington in regards to this farm bill. All of a sudden, like my, my comrade uh, say, Frank, uh, we don't know anything about this. This just jumped up in the sky and say, hey, look, uh, we're going to ban Congress. It started off with this Congress guy from Illinois, I believe. He got no business. Man, don't take my rights. Don't take my culture and don't take my tradition and the way of life that the people of Guam, the Chamorros, the Filipinos, the Chinese, we all together here in Guam, please, fight for us. Let this state bill and resolution get to Congress and open the eyes of those people that actually is taking these things away from us. I appreciate you all have a good day, a great day, and half a day Guam. Go to Guam. Thank you, Anki. Right, right after everybody uh, testifies, we're going to read the resolution so you understand my, my initial approach to this one. So we're going to finish with the testimony, and then I'll, I'll have the, uh, the Secretary of the Legislature uh, read the bill or the resolution. resolution. Frank Okiyama, do you want to testify, my friend? Frank, I know you know a lot about how to approach this, yeah? Also, uh, Jack Leman, are you here to support or present oral testimony? Jack? Uh, Robert Celestro, or Roberto and Celestro? Thank Mr. You. Frank. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon. My name is Frank Okiyama. And uh, there's a few things there as, uh, that kind of bothers me with this bill that they just passed against uh, banning of cockfighting. And the first point I want to make is uh, this farm bill that they put a rider on. It's There's just something wrong with this bill when you don't put it on the floor for debate. Or nothing, they just pick a bill that they know is going to pass and put a, a bill as a writer, and it goes through Congress. And, like, Mr. What do you say? Uh, these people don't know anything about us. They didn't even discuss this, they didn't even ask anyone in Guam or Puerto Rico or uh, Virgin Islands. There's just something wrong with this. And that point is, it just should tell you that. Somebody's rushing this bill through, and they're using the farm bill. They know the bills, farm bill is going to go through. So they use a writer to get it through. So that's one point that you see, why are they doing this? Why are they putting a bill that would ban cockfighting in Guam, Puerto Rico, and the other, without consulting anyone in Guam, without having any public hearing in Puerto Rico, or, or why? Because there's something else involved here. This is not about Amdu cruelty. This is about the money. It's always been about money. Somebody's pushing. Somebody's pushing from the side. Nobody took the time to come to Guam and say, how is this going to impact the cockfighters in Guam, their families, and the businesses that has 
uh, attached to the business of cockfighting. No one was interested in how it would impact economically or culturally. And so I agree with that fellow, you guys need to fight for us. And I also suggest to all the cockfighters here, you need to bring more people. You need to talk to your families. You need to talk to everybody. You need to start talking to everybody. They need to have 5,000 people on these when you have hearings. You know, 300 people is not going to do it. They don't care about what a, one half of 1% of the population. We need to show force. You can't. If you're going to fight, you got to stand up and fight. You can't just act like you're going to fight. You got to, I mean, you got to do something because they're taking something away from us that they don't have nothing. They don't know anything about it. But I suggest that we please <laughs> fight for the people that's here and those that aren't here. This is really impacting a lot of people that I know. I've been away for a long time, but I've been fighting roosters for 50 years. So I, I know this, is, is, most of the people that are fighting roosters are there for the camaraderie, for the social gathering. It, it really is part of our culture. Police officers fight roosters. Senators fight roosters. Doctors fight roosters. Firefighters fight roosters. People that work at DOC fight roosters. Bus drivers fight roosters. Everyone fights roosters in Guam. Thank you. Thank you for letting me speak. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Boy. Go ahead, Bob. Okay, so just Masi, Go out to Robert Celestio. Mabuhay. Uh, Senators, Chairman. Uh, for many years, my dad, uh, Dr. Celestio, was a cockfighter. He was also a knifer here in Guam. I used to go with him as a little child to go to Agate, the Dome, even here at one time. Uh, we've raised many roosters, and I am support of this bill. I agree with all the cockers here. Uh, I don't participate anymore in the cockfight, but I do raise uh, cockfighters. I mean, co roosters. I do have McCrays, hatches, seals, and all that. I still have about 70 roosters running in my ranch. I have two acres. I, I raise them. I think I can't get rid of them because they're in my blood. I remember growing as a kid, my dad would say, hey, go feed the chickens, go water, you know, clean their water, and that's very important what the other gentlemen are saying is that they need uh, clean water. So I'm here to support. I, I, I really appreciate what you guys are doing. I think uh, once you get this uh, resolution uh, to the congressman, I think we're going to do a really good job. Like the other gentleman said, we need a lot of people. We need a lot of support. So I just want to say that that uh, I support the caulkers, and uh, thank you again, Sijus Masi. Thank you, Robert. Anybody else? Marlon Sanga. Marlon Sanga, just support. Albert Akwaji. I'm Albert Afazi. I'm from the village of Mauricio in the half a day Congress uh, and president. I'm not uh, really a speaker. Maybe you hear me stuttering. And, but uh, I'm here to fight for something I believe in. Uh, I don't know, uh, some of the brothers were talking about uh, George Washington and Magellan, but I have a history of myself too. Uh, uh, I was growing up as a little kid too, with my dad uh, having us feed the chickens, and, and I started to like uh, raising chickens and it became a part of the, the way of my life. So uh, even up to this day, I'm you know, still feeding chickens and watering them and taking care of them. And you know, just like the other brother was saying that uh, they were racing horses back then the stage, they're hitting the horse to make it go faster. And, and there, there are fishes, dolphins in the aquarium. They don't want to be there. There are people put them there so they can make money. Uh, us, we're, we're, like one of the brothers was saying, we don't, we don't make money out of this. Matter of fact, I never, you know, I just love the sport. Uh, I, I really like being here. Uh, I'm, I've been married for 27 years and I still love my wife and all that. We got, you know, like every family, you know, we still got our struggles, but, you know, she knows what I like doing and she supports me. And, and sometimes us guys got to have a little bit of, uh, play time a little bit on the side there to to work on our chickens. Sometimes our chicken, our wife come and call us to, can you come talk to us? And, uh, 
because you're not talking to me, you know. I said, hey, that's why I'm not talking to you because my chicken don't talk back, you know, but we're just joking. <laughs> we're just joking and, and we really do get along and all that. Uh, I will never be a, a LeBron James or, or a Michael Jordan, you know, uh, to, to compete in the sport, but this is our sport. Um, uh, my idol is right back here, uh, Nada Guam. He's a very, uh, uh, I've I seen him in a, a DVD and he really, you know, I, I, I really want to be that guy. There's a lot of people uh, here too uh, that want to win a derby. Me, myself, I want to win a derby and that one day if I win a derby, I feel that for that one day, I'll feel that high and mighty. Uh, but uh, like I say, Mr. President uh, or Mr. Congressman, uh, we need everybody to fight for us because we have people here in, uh, and that's going in the military. We have a lot of families. I have my youngest son there in the military and in the, in, uh, the army, and I know any time they, they pull him in to go in there, he's going to be in harm's way, and we, we understand that, but it's for the freedom that we, we do, and, and I love my son. And <clears throat> I just want to say that, uh, you know, we, we have to pull together and try to have this thing going. We, we, we don't go out and cause trouble or do anything, this is our way of life and we wanna keep it going. So we get to meet everybody, a lot of people here, we seen them around and all that, but we say hi, we don't, we go, we don't cause trouble here in the cockfighting business. We just wanna meet people and this is our way of meeting people. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, there is a Subdanchi Urdenti are you here to speak or support? Support? Jack Lemang or Lemangi, here to support? Eduardo, Eduardo Meneses, support? Um, Marlon Sanga? Is there any okay, uh, is there any I, I think we're just about completed with the, uh, the testimonies, but before we go on to read on the, the, the resolution, I, uh, I want to uh, call on our senators to give their thoughts on this. Uh, maybe we start out with uh, Senator Jim Moylan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here with you folks today. I appreciate all your testimonies. It's very informative. I hear a lot from your heart. I hear a lot, from, a lot from the culture. I hear a lot of your experience. And the experience that we have, uh, we're coming up with our 75th anniversary of the liberation of Guam. Uh, relatively, for the government, that's still kind of a young government. But every year we're learning. We're learning how we, are, uh, how we need to grow, how we need to work together. And, and we're learning of our understanding how the federal government looks upon us. And you know for sure of how the federal government has taken these uh, steps uh, against something that we appreciate and we understand and we want for the island. It's not fair, and I, I totally disagree with what has happened. But this is the process that we're doing, and we're, we feel that we're doing the best we, we uh, can by hearing our, letting our voice be heard through this resolution through uh, Senator Talahi. And it's very important on the process because the whole federal government and Congress would hear, hear this. So after uh, the public hearing and eventually uh, this going on session floor, it will be all voted upon by all your 15 senators and I'm most definite it will pass. And then it goes up to a congressman and then, and then it's his voice coming for, from your voice and we'll continue to fight for you. So the 75th anniversary, we're, we're, I'm sure we'll continue the, the derby and everything like that, but I believe with the strength that you've had here today and what you've spoken out clearly with your hearts, I believe on the 100th anniversary of Guam's Liberation Day, we will continue with the cockfighting. So thank you very much for your, for your support. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to everyone who uh, is here today to uh, be a part of this public hearing. I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to come to you and to listen to your concerns and everything that you shared with us today. And we look forward to sharing this with our colleagues and passing this resolution. So, Sutuas Masi. Sit 
Suez Masi, uh, Mr. Chair, for giving an, us an opportunity to speak, and I want to extend my undunklin as Suez Masi and maraming salamat po to all of you guys here who want to continue to make a difference for what you folks culturally do. And as I he heard the earlier speakers talk about the culture, talk about not giving the fight, talk about people coming to band together, not just in the hundreds, but in the thousands to show the United States that we're here, this is our island, and what we do culturally should not be taken away from us. I truly believe and want to support that, and it's through this process that we take those steps to tell Congress that you cannot take something that was culturally and traditionally given to us. So I want to say we're here to continue to listen. We're here to get some, uh, to hear what you have to say, and we're here to send that message uh, on behalf of all of you guys here. So. Uh, Maraming salamat po and undunklo na si Masi for having us here this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Therese Terlai. Hopefully, I just want to say um, very honored to be here that you've allowed us to do this hearing here. It's very uh, good for us. I, I always appreciate hearing from everybody on the bills and I think you did a great job with your testimony. Uh, I agree that it's unfair when Congress puts things in bills where they they take things away from Guam or impose restrictions on Guam or impose burdens on Guam without any input from Guam. That's wrong. And then they do the reverse. They sometimes pass bills where they exclude Guam where there are things that we should be included on. For example, compensation for radiation that Mr. Celestial's been fighting for and different things like that. So, so I think uh, it's all also part of a bigger picture that I hope that you're gonna also help us when we are moving for, you know, uh, to force Congress to really address our status. That they, if they can do that, then we won't be having to do this on a piecemeal, piece by piece basis and then we can, hopefully be able to control these things on our own. Thank you, Senator. Let me just repeat the, uh, you know, those that uh, uh, want to uh, submit a uh, written testimony to send it to my office, and the address is, I'm going to just say, si te bete la que talentios. Ms. Jennifer Wynn from the Congressman's office wants to speak. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, the, uh, the address is uh, email to Senator Piru at senatorjpterlai.com. And maybe you might forget the address is right past the, the Agana Post Office on the right side as you go out to the um, traffic light. It's the yellow building, I'm on top, and um, my name is right on the, on the door, so please give me a written testimony, and your written testimony will also be submitted probably with, be submitted with the, uh, the resolution. I want to call on now. Uh, Jennifer Wynn. Jennifer Wynn to, uh, to give us her thoughts. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Senator. Thank you for the invitation today. I'm honored to be here just as well. Um, you know, as the testimonies were coming in, I realized that not everybody is aware that there is a... Um, um, an introduction of HR 1189, and that was introduced by Republican member. Um, that was Representative Jennifer Gonzalez Colon, and so that was that happened last month. And our congressman was a co-sponsor on that bill, so he's on board, and he he absolutely he absolutely um, supports your efforts here today and all of yours as well. Okay, and um, earlier, um, Alice and Augustine had mentioned a few things, and it's, and you know, there are, there's a lot going on that you're probably not aware of, but I assure you that our congressman is working very hard. He's working with the Congressional Research Services, and he's looking at every avenue, okay? And so he's working very hard for you, rest assured. And I just wanted to take the time to share some of that with you today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you very much. Uh, make sure, Fan, you give us the name of uh, 
the the person that you just mentioned. We want to touch base with her. Okay, okay, because because uh, we're we're also in touch with the governor of uh, Puerto Rico regarding this. Uh, at this time, uh, okay, go ahead. Just to state for the record. The HR 1189 is to repeal section 12616 of the Agriculture Improvement Act of 2018 and for other purposes. Okay? Thank you very much. You're welcome. At this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, I want to uh, give it over to uh, our favorite uh, Secretary of the Legislature, Amanda Shelton, Senator Amanda Shelton. Mr. Chair, I'll read out for the public uh, the resolution. It's resolution number 14-35 COR, introduced by Pito Terlahi, Tina Rose Munya Barnes, Amanda Shelton, Kelly G. Marsh Titano, Clint Rigel, and James Moylan. Relative to requesting Guam's delegate to Congress, Michael St. Nicholas, to introduce an amendment to the Organic Act of Guam regarding protecting culturally significant practices on Guam. Be it resolved by the Committee on Rules of Imeni Trentai Cinco de la Senator in Guahan, whereas cockfighting on Guam dates back to the pre-colonial Spanish era, and the Loisa expedition in 1525 reported that there was no kind livestock whatsoever, not even chickens or land-based birds, except some turtle doves that look very much like them. They keep the said doves and raise them in their houses, where they keep them in some cages and train them to fight against one another and place bets on which ones will win. Proves that this is not only a cultural practice, but an ancestral one as well. And the Mayor's Council of Guam and the Association of Marianas Island Mayors have unilaterally passed a resolution to protect cop fighting rooted as an ancestral practice. And cockfighting on Guam is a practice passed down from generations and is a means for our community to learn family values as well as come together. And the United States Navy Lieutenant Commander P.J. Searles in 1850 provided an account of the existence of cockfighting as a part of feast day activities. And a United States Navy fiscal statement prior to the Organic Act in the year 1913 documents that the naval government of Guam profited from a cockfighting privilege tax. And Guam is home to more than 2,500 cockfighters and significantly contributes to our local economy. And a rider provision in the Federal Farm Bill was passed without any input or consideration of those affected, the people of Guam. And when the Organic Act of Guam was written and ratified, and the people of Guam had the ability to make amendments to the Organic Act, cockfighting was already an accepted cultural norm. And the provision in the Farm Bill is a violation of Guam's right to self-determination. And banning of cockfighting is one of many examples where a colonial regime suppresses the culture of the indigenous Chamorro people dating back to 1899. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Committee on Rules of Imeni Trentai Cinco de la in Guahan does hereby, on behalf of Vila Hesitor in Guahan and the people of Guam, request that Guam's delegate to Congress, Michael St. Nicholas, to introduce an amendment to the Organic Act of Guam regarding protecting culturally significant practices on Guam, and be it further resolved that the Speaker and the Chairperson of the Committee on Rules certify and the Legislative Secretary attest to the adoption hereof and that copies of the same be thereafter transmitted to Speaker Nancy Pelosi of the United States House of Representatives, Congressman Michael St. Nicholas, and to the Honorable Lourdes Leon Guerrero y Magahagan Guahan. Thank you very much. Viva Samoa, viva Filipino, viva Toto Guam. At this point in time, the time now, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, 4.36. And the date is uh, March 30th, and uh, 2020, I mean 2019. And at this point in time, this get together or this uh, hearing is adjourned.